I thought maybe five or six people would turn up, and look at this uh, oh. room full. But um, <coughs> I guess you know we've had uh, <coughs> we've only had uh, we've had a party going for I don't know how many weeks now, but I haven't slept much in that time. But there's maybe five weeks, four weeks, I guess. Um, and in ten uh, ten working days, we had to try and put a, a whole team together. Mm. Um, and in, we had over 350 people. Can everyone hear me okay? Yep. Okay, over 350 people put their hands up <coughs> to be candidates, um, three of which we have right here now. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! So we have Mark, Michael and Grant. And uh, Mark's uh, on our Senate ticket. Um, and Michael uh, is here for Dawson and Grant for Capricornia. I got that right. <laughs> so, uh, so it's it's just been overwhelming the amount of support we've had. Um, I'll, I'll just give you some statistics. Whether you um, we love have heard it. them. Okay. <laughs> well, in uh, in ten hours we had five hundred people sign up and pay uh, to be members of this party, and that's never happened in Australia's history that we can find. Um, in uh, thirty hours we'd had a thousand, and in two days we had. 2,000, we're now nearly 3,000, I'm not sure, whatever it is. Um, so that, that's that been uh, a sort of an overwhelming, uh, no other party's ever done that, so hopefully you guys are all part of a, a history. Um, I know these guys are going to be uh, part of history, I, I, I'm sure that their kids, and this is what we're doing it for, by the way, our kids yep. and our grandkids. Yep, yep. Exactly. Uh, we don't want to leave them in a, in a state like you know, France or United Kingdom or <coughs> Sweden, the rape capital of the world now, or Belgium or Germany. Um, there's people leaving those countries now in droves because they don't see any future for their kids and their grandkids. And uh, I think it's really important that that's what uh, we all understand that uh, you're the guys on the front line now. Uh, we're all on the front line <coughs> trying to save our country. And um, while ever our party is there, uh, we'll never surrender our sovereignty to an unelected, unrepresented, uh, unrepresentative uh, global bureaucracy, which is what the United Nations is. And by the way, they're the ones who are driving most of this agenda. And unfortunately, um, the three parties, Labor, Liberals and the Greens, have all sold out to those people. And, um, uh, you know, we, we just will never, we'll never do that as long as I'm around. And, uh, and I'm sure you guys will never allow it to happen. So. Uh, we can we can sort of turn the tide. We can we can bring it back into a uh, you know we can get Australia back for Australians again. Um, whatever's happened, we can we can uh, change it. So if we can get enough people on the cross benches in the upper house and the lower house, and and really we won't need a lot to to be quite frank. Uh, one or two people is all it takes to have the balance of power. And once you have the balance of power, um, we can then block all their bills until we get exactly what we want and um, uh, you know I know what we want I know what I want you know we, we we're uh, and by the way we're not a single um, policy party you know I know we talk a lot about immigration uh, mm -hmm. but that's our biggest threat right now mm -hmm. um, you know the, these open borders I don't know if you know it and you wouldn't hear it from the major parties we had 830,000 people came to Australia last year permanently mm -hmm. They talk about 160,000, 190,000, that's all you'll hear from Morrison and people, but that's bullshit. The fact is that 830,000 people came here and we can't, we can't keep bringing these people in, especially the ones like the uh, fake refugees um, who are intent on changing our way of life to suit them rather than them changing their way of life to suit us. Um, we've had a lot of great immigrants who've come to this country, Italians and Greeks and uh, Filipinos and, and uh, Thais, uh, the Maldives. Vietnamese, <laughs> Maltese, um, uh, Indians, Sikhs, Poms, Poms, they love us, they integrate. <laughs> well that's it, yeah. and the which one? First fleet. There you go, <laughs> first fleet and convicts like him. <laughs> <First fleet. laughs> uh, so they all Same came here and they, they uh, <laughs> <laughs> they all built a beautiful country, you know, and, uh, and exactly yeah, everyone right. got in and helped and they, they, they didn't, you don't see them on the welfare queues and all that. Unfortunately, these people they're bringing in now to try and bolster up their bloody um, electorate so they get re-elected, uh, they don't do that. Uh, particularly the Muslims, the Sudanese, 
and uh, all they're interested in is turning it into an Islamic State. Uh, that's the greatest threat to our nation right now. So why we talk a lot about that now is because that's our, that's our biggest threat. And if, you have a, if you're in the army or something and you have a threat coming to you, you've got to deal with the, the biggest threat for a start off. Then we can look at all the other things. You know, like we're very, very pro uh, development. You know, we should have been building dams 82 yeah. years ago when Mr. Bradfield first put up his Bradfield scheme. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can't right. believe it. We, we can't even make a car anymore. Like, That's it. Bullshit. All our industry's gone. By the way, all the stuff that we uh, have, all our um, shirts, our, our uh, um, caps, and all that sort of stuff, that, and badges. It's all made here in Australia, except for one thing, the caps. We could not get them made in Australia. We, we talked yeah. to 30 different companies and they don't build caps in Australia anymore. So not only don't we build cars and washing machines and all those things that we used to build, we don't even build a bloody cap. So we have to get them from out of, uh, out of Australia, but the embroidery was done here in Australia. So that is, shows you that you know, the Lima Agreement in 1975 uh, agreed to Mr. Whitlam signed to send 30% uh, of our uh, manufacture offshore to prop up some third world country. Well now it's 90, over 90% 90 of our manufacture is offshore, so uh, we've got to eventually get that back here. Mr Trump's done it in America, he's done a bloody great job over there, and uh, we can do the same thing here. Yeah. We can bring our manufacture back, and the way to do it is put a tariff on. You know, everyone else subsidises theirs, so uh, we, we can do what Trump does. You know, if you want to sell your your garbage into Australia, and a lot of it is rubbish, uh, then we'll put a 25% tariff on it and we can then rebuild our own manufacture. So we have to encourage business like that and the only way you can do it is shrink government. Our government is massively bloated right now. There's two sorts of people in the world, like you. There's working people, people who work for a living, and then there's other people who vote for a living. And of course the people who vote for a living are going to vote for people who are going to give them more and more money. So we've got to get back to uh, working for a living, the people who work for a living and uh, you know build the country again, which is what our forefathers have done and whatever in this room I'm sure is doing. So um, uh, the uh, uh, some of our other policies are for the aged uh, for the pensioners. I have a bill in Parliament now that's in its second reading stage, and that is to take away the means test from the retirees from pensioners. Uh, it's nearly impossible to get on the pension in this country. It takes you six to twelve months. Here's the people who built the place, they've worked all their life, they've paid their taxes and now they don't want to give them any of that back again. I've said a few times in Parliament that if we treated our pensioners as well as we treat our fake refugees, mm -hmm. they'd be way, way better off. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, our veterans, uh, we treat them really badly. Uh, we've got to change that, we've got to take care of the veterans. These are the people who have gone to to war for us and some people, some of them have lost their lives and some of them have lost limbs and uh, again they, they're they getting treated really really badly so we've got to look after those yeah. guys yeah. and we, we have a good exactly. policy yeah. for that. Exactly. The Family Law Court by the way is a, is a disaster. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. That's got to be disbanded and it's we've got to reorganise that. Yeah. Uh, the Child Support Agency yes. is a disaster. Yes. That's uh, um, people in there, mainly females who hate men, yeah, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and we're, we're losing two or three. Uh, we're losing people suiciding yeah. every every day. Kids are missing. Uh, yeah. Exactly, yeah. and, and yeah. they're using unfortunately. And look, not all the guys are good. I can tell you, but you know the vast majority are being penalised, uh, and they're using the kids as weapons. And yeah. the kid, and, and my brother mm -hmm. was one of them, by the way. You know, he didn't get to see his son for 12 or 14 years, and oh. luckily now they're they're together again. And he's happy, but he was very very down sure. because uh, you know it's his boy just mm. like it was her boy and, mm. and he never got to see him so there's a lot of things that we've got to fix up in the country and uh, I think with uh, decent people standing up and uh, and uh, and fighting for us you know um, like these gentlemen here like uh, the 30 we have 70 candidates now who are running in every every state we have a Senate team uh, of at least two and in, in Queensland we have five uh, and in Queensland, the 30 uh, seats, we have a candidate in every seat. And uh, then uh, in, in the other states, we have six or seven. If we'd had another 10 days, we only had 10 days to do all this. Yeah. If we had another 10 days, yeah. we could have filled all the seats. Because yeah. that's how many people were putting their hand up. So it was very humbling. To, and Good work, David. <laughs> and I've got to tell you, the quality of people 
uh, who put their hands up was just incredible, you know, uh, like these guys, but also down in New South Wales, Victoria, we have two engineers oh, down there. <laughs> Sorry, all except for Grant. <laughs> but uh, yeah, an engineer who's in the top half a percent in the world in his field, um, and he's uh, Adrian Shioke, and uh, another engineer down there, and that was in um, what state were we in then? Boston? Do you remember? Victoria. Victoria. <laughs> South. Uh, Victoria, I think. Australia. South Australia. There you go. I've been in four states in two days, yeah, so uh, I'm sort of, blue. yeah, but oh. it, it's been great to meet all of <laughs> Don't jinx him! Have any of them been a drunken state? Pardon? Have any of them been a drunken state? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I haven't had enough time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've said there's two states have been, but, uh, uh, so the next step has been very Yeah. Right, in a month. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Okay, so there we got all these great people who put their hands up, and if we just had a bit more time, we could have filled every seat in the in the nation, I believe, another week or two, and we would have done the, the whole lot. So um, yep. it's been really, really good, and it just shows you that the the silent majority, mm -hmm. uh, what I believe is a silent majority, have risen up a little bit in Australia. They've said we've had enough of this bullshit. We really need to get Australia back to being Australia again, and uh, hopefully. <laughs> Uh, all of us and all our candidates can be the voice uh, for those people and uh, hopefully we give them a bit of a shake up. It's really important if, uh, if anyone can help in, uh, in all the electoral, uh, electorate, uh, uh, the polling booths I should say. Pre-polling, uh, we think there's going to be more than 40% or around 40% of Australians are going to pre-poll because they've had enough and pre-polling is always an indication that people are sick and tired of what's happening and so hopefully that goes in our favour but on the Saturday there's going to be a lot of booze, so we need people in each of those. If, if uh, anyone's got uh, 10 minutes or an hour or two to go down there and, uh, and do a bit of uh, handing out of a few how to vote cards, that would be really appreciated and Australia needs you to do it. But uh, I think that's about all I can say. I might just get these guys up and uh, if they'd like to just introduce themselves and, and tell you a bit about themselves and why they're here. So Mark, have you got a... <laughs> Mark Absalon, and he's uh, running in, uh, for the, the Senate. He's on our Senate ticket. So, yeah, uh, well, thanks for, very much for coming, ladies and gentlemen. It was very fairly short notice of putting all this together and uh, grabbing praise with the time that you had the, the time to do it, able to do it. But uh, we, we, everyone knows here uh, the, the, the position we're in and, uh, and how critical it is. My my background uh, uh, has been I'm, I'm a father of eight, and I've got ten grandkids. Uh, that'll probably double in the next couple of years, totally and uh, <laughs> and so uh, you know, I, I've been watching what's been going on for the last 40 years. I was associated with the old Labor. Uh, sorry, the old Labor. <laughs> Wash them out. The, 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 old, uh, the, the old National Party, uh, which most of you know, Ray Braithwaite uh, in this area, and um, I'd go back to 40 years ago uh, with this issue ads for Ray right back then. But when we, but I, we saw such a change start to happen, and, and in 19, 19, about 93. Uh, I was uh, I, I chaired the Australia First campaign here in Mackay. Now, some of you may know, may, may remember it, um, but uh, there was a man that used to go around Jeremy Lee. Uh, he used to go around about 20 years, letting the people know what was actually going on. And Jeremy introduced us to the New World Order and also the Lima Declaration, which Fraser just mentioned before. It was introduced in '75, and and we've just seen all that happen. The winding down of all our manufacturing and our farming uh, in favour of the third world countries to establish a level playing field, and it's just it's been an utter disgrace. So. This man, when I, when, I, when I reached out to him and uh, I, I said to Fraser, what's the first, the biggest priority we've got in Australia? And he said, he's laughing. I said, well, you've got mm -hmm. me. Uh, because the reality is, this, it's, it's critical and people don't realise it. I don't know whether you, whether you know, there's, there's over a hundred Sharia courts already in the UK. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Over a hundred Sharia courts. And I've had, I've had footage sent to me, uh, privately sent to me, of areas of, of Islam where there's enclaves where you can't go if you unless you're Islam yeah, yeah, yeah. in the UK. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And and here they are on the in in the dark on the street corners with women bound, auctioning them, auctioning women in the dark at, at night over there in these Muslim enclaves. So we're about two and three quarter percent, I think, at the present time. Once it gets to about three and a half percent, it's virtually unstoppable. Yeah. And so we, we stop it all now, eh? it, well, well, we've got a. It's never well, too late. You can't have that attitude. No, no. The reality yeah. is, that if if we get, we can get something moving with this. We we really there yeah. is a, there is a spark there. 
thank God we've got this man uh, who's uh, the, the, war, the warrior. Yeah, thank you so world. much, uh, and, and so, you know, uh, we, we can, yeah, it's, a, it's, an, it's an amazing opportunity for us to be able to make a great difference and start to turn things around. But, uh, I think uh, Mark's very right with Islam. You know, people underestimate what what can happen until you go to those countries and see what's happened now. That you know, big parts of uh, cities cordoned off, no go zones. The, per the police will only go in in, in armoured vehicles or in helicopters. The only way they'll go in there, and that I don't know any Australians who want that. But unfortunately, there are a lot of Australians who don't understand that that's what's going to happen. But uh, there's been 52 countries on this planet that started off as Christian, Jewish, uh, you know, Hindu or Buddhist. Uh, they're now Islamic states and the only thing that's happening to those four different groups of people is they're being slaughtered in those states. Uh, so, you know, we just seriously don't need that. Uh, the Greens uh, are always saying, you know, Greens for Islam and uh, gays for Islam and uh, the, the Labor Party for Islam and until they get here and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, like gays for Islam. Excuse me. Yeah. Excuse me. Please throw me off. And the copper was threatening to charge her. For going into into Lakamba, yeah. That's right. Yeah. But it's, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. 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 All that, and that's that's what happens is it's turned around now that uh, the innocent party is the guilty party, and so I think everyone in the room understands. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. So, and what can we do? We can do something. Uh, the refugees who came here, they came here for refuge. They, were, they ran away from their country and mainly fighting age men, a lot of them, mm. uh, because they didn't want to fight their battles. So Australians sent good diggers over there to fight their battles against ISIS and America did and, and the UK. Well, now we've beaten those people at the expense uh, of the taxpayer. You know, we paid for those diggers to be over there and then they paid with their lives, some of them, and, and with their bodies, you know, and uh, being disabled and coming back in, uh, uh, you know, in, in terrible condition, some of them. So we went and fought their battles for these cowardice bastards and uh, they're now beaten so they don't need refuge anymore so it's a really good time to get them back to their beloved homeland they can rebuild their their yeah. homelands and uh, the same in the Sudan you know the, the problems over there are nowhere near as bad so we can ship the Sudanese back there so you know when you give somebody refuge it's only for a certain amount of time it's not forever and so it's a really good time to get get them back there and I think that that's uh, it's time we send all those people back well done yeah. Uh, There's actually a couple of South Africans that I met here tonight, and like they said, they, they left South Africa because of what was happening over there to come to Australia, right. the, the most luckiest, promised land in the world, exactly. and, 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 and they're here tonight because they're like, well, exactly. it's happening, starting to happen here. Well, I know, and, and the South Africans, by the way, you know, if I uh, get some good people in there, we'll uh, make sure we get uh, 10,000 uh, emergency visas to get them out of there. Mm. I don't know if you, you know exactly what's happening there, but I can tell you it's terrible. Yeah. 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 What they're yeah. doing to those and to little kids, boiling children, and, and I won't even go into all the stuff. And I, I get it on my, uh, we get it from the South Africans every day. So it's, it's a, a shocking thing that they're doing. They're good Christians. The best settlers, we, some of the best settlers we've ever had have been the South Africans. Mm. They come here, they get straight to work. You will never find them on the welfare. Oh, they, 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 they have businesses. Yeah. They, 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 I work with a few and they have yep. poor. Yep. <laughs> they're, uh, they're, they're, they're farmers and stuff like Yes, sir. What about, um, what's, what's your policy or understanding on uh, our constitutional rights? I mean, they've been um, eroded for many years. Uh, absolutely. Uh, there's, there's a, a smart a, man called uh, a lot of people might know, Wayne Glue, that's fighting the uh, local council. Mm. He's been uh, charged for so many rates. Mm. So he's actually fought them in court and won using our constitution, which has been eroded for many years. You're right. Our constitution. Uh, yeah, thanks. Our constitution's been uh, uh, busted by uh, Mr. Hawke for a start off. Was uh, the first time for the Franklin Gordon below Franklin Dam. Uh, and he used a uh, section 5129 of the constitution to uh, to avoid uh, you know the rivers normally rivers and waterways are always a state uh, issue and uh, he he used uh, foreign uh, 5129 I can't remember the the, the exact the exact wording of it but um, 
uh, he used a, 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 that 51-29 to get around the Constitution and then he blocked the uh, Gordon Below Franklin. We can reverse that. I have a bill that will go into Parliament and uh, what it does is just exclude the United Nation. Uh, Abbott tried to get it. So, uh, I can tell you there's 193 countries represented by, uh, in the United Nations, 56% of which are despotic dictatorships or Muslim countries. And they're the people who are telling our people in Australia what to do. So get out of the United Nations. He's that's right a, off. Yeah. He's right off. Hold your own DMs, the Bradfield. The Bradfield. That's, that's a, that's a no-brainer. Okay, so the Bradfield scheme is just part of it, the, uh, the revised Bradfield scheme. Yes. So from the Tully to the Herbert to the Burdekin to Hell's Gate Dam, uh, you're going from 849 metres above sea level down to 490 and then all the way down into the Walsh, the Tate, the Lynn, the Islesley, the Cloncurry, the, the Flinders, some of the best river systems in the world, in, in Australia. We can dam that and we can move water all the way down to south of Winton. We can It'll irrigate, itself. We can mm. irrigate oh, millions yeah. and millions of acres and it's all gravity fed. So mm. if you run water at four degrees, it'll run forever. The Romans did it in 312 BC, they, they, yep. they built their first aqueduct. It's still, it's still running. running now. It's yes, still running. Yes, yes. So if you run water, like, and no, most rivers in Australia, by the way, are, are one metre in 3,000. So every three kilometres you drop a metre, that's a normal flowing river and it'll keep running forever. And we can do that from that tully all the way down south and we can irrigate literally millions of acres. We can become the food bowl of the world and we can employ thousands and thousands of people. Mathematical how question, how much are we giving away to buy back the water that doesn't exist uh, yeah. versus <laughs> versus how much it would cost yeah. to, put, to put the dams? A mathematical question. Do we, can we work on that? Well, the, the, to can do we all just... that that I just said, and that's it's about three times as big as the Bradfield scheme, by the way, it's way bigger, than, it's about three times as big as the Murray-Darling. Uh, and that's about a 56 or $57 billion Deal. Now, I don't know if you know it, but we spend $130 billion in eight years to close the gap in the Aboriginal oh, industry yeah. that hasn't ever closed. So, uh, not that I'm saying that we shouldn't be spending money there, but what I'm saying is that we could we could get in people employed. Instead mm. of doing handouts yeah. all the time, percentage we could get return. people back business, to work. Percentage return. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. return on investment is uh, what you'd see with, uh, you know, with um, BHP or Rio Tinto. They're looking at oh, uh, an yeah. ROI of five to ten years. So, uh, but nation building projects, you don't have to get a return on investment in five or ten. You, you've got 50 or 100 or 1,000 right. years. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. As you I said, the, the Romans Tinto. have done it 2,000 years ago, and that's still producing now. So, um, And by the way, we would get a return on investment quite quickly because you're buying the land from the graziers or whoever owns it, and a lot of it's parched desert, and uh, you pay them three times what they expect for it. Who cares? But when you sell it as farming land, you can get 20 times what, a, what the, the value. So you can get a really good return on investment, but that's not a, a priority. If we'd worked on that, that uh, formula, Snowy River would never have been built. You know? So they're nation building projects and we don't need to get a return straight away. But if I could just get Mike up here. Yay! Mike's obviously served his country. You can see all the medals there. So, uh, Thank you for your service. Uh, right, thanks, thank mate. you. Thank you. Uh, well, Michael Turner, uh, affectionately known by all my uh, army brother and sisters as Blue, uh, due to the. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's red. So yeah, fourth generation military, great grandfather, grandfather, uncle, and myself, uh, and my sons are also looking to go that way. Um, very proud of Australia and for what we have and what our forefathers have fought for. Mm -hmm. And over the last 15 years, seeing that degrade to the point where I can see personally, if it keeps going the way it is, in the next 20 years, there'll be a civil war. That's just the way I see it personally. I could be wrong. No one's perfect. But the reason I'm standing up um, here with Fraser is I was interested in politics a little, a long while ago, and I didn't have anyone that I really looked up to or admired. Mm -hmm. um, I was approached by the Shooters and Fishers um, party at the last election. They asked me if I would run in Townsville for them, and knowing full well that we had not a hope in hell of getting in, the sole purpose was to take votes away from Greens and Labor, and we achieved that quite well. Um, they weren't interested this time around, 
and I got asked the question and I didn't hesitate because I was actually looking for a way in to Fraser's party. Mm -hmm. And when I got that call from, believe it or not, one of the uh, girls that I used to serve with in 5 Aviation Regiment, she sent me a message and I just said, why not? Yeah. Yes, done. Now, small businessman myself, <coughs> uh, I've only been going uh, with it since August, September last year uh, in a trucking business, doing really hard, yet to turn a profit, but we're, we're looking down the road to uh, bigger and better things. Second? You need battery. Battery? Battery trucks. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. Don't start me on that. <laughs> Do not. You don't want to hear my response to that. No one will like it. You can, you can oh, everyone here will like it. <laughs> Just don't go but, up the hill. But yeah, so when, when I actually said yes, I was en route to Melbourne with a load of bananas and avocados for um, the markets down there. So I did everything I could to make sure I balanced my logbook and my hours to get back up to Townsville, to get the ball rolling, to come back down to Mackay and start progressing through and going through the entire electorate, which is huge. Um, a lot of people don't know, but the last three suburbs in Townsville, so Annandale, Woolgaroo and uh, Stewart, are the start of Dawson oh, in the Dawson. north, right. and to the south, uh, I believe it's the Nebo Road. Uh, is it? I think you're right. That's right. So that's, that's it there. And then we've yep. got yep. everything in between. So, Cannonvale, Early Beach, Proserpine, um, Bowen, um, and all those little tiny cuttable, all those places. And yesterday I spent most of the day at the polling booth, which was absolutely outstanding. Um, we had, believe it or not, the other conservative parties coming up and saying, we actually want to vote for Fraser. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the exact same thing happened to me today. Um, I went for a quick bolt up to um, Early, Beach. Early Beach and Cannonvale <laughs> and just went for a, a wander around there. People didn't seem too interested because there wasn't a polling booth or anything like that there. They had to go into Pross Pine. So I thought, righto, eh? this is a pointless activity. Whipped into Prossy, uh, met the people there, and every conservative person there came up and greeted me and gave me a hug. Uh, the lady in particular for um, Pauline Hanson was trying to find out how to volunteer for Fraser's party. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. She couldn't. She couldn't find out how. So I wouldn't be surprised that on actual voting day, she's not wearing an orange shirt, She'll be wearing one of ours mm -hmm. because she took one of those wads of my how to vote cards with her and my core flues that I left zip tied to the fence. Excellent. She's okay. um, going to take them when that polling booth shuts and she's going to put them up at the, the church where they're going to be doing the voting. And yeah. she's given me all her details so when I drive through, I can stop in and pick them up. Um, Good on her. Now, yeah, the thing, yeah. things Good that I'm passionate about are basically every single thing within our policy range. Yep. There's nothing in there that I have a dim view of. There's things in there that I have a very strong view on. And the main one is Islam for me. Mm -hmm. um, after being over in Afghanistan uh, most of 2011 and then going back there as a civil contractor for a uh, government agency, uh, I spent my time there until January 14. So I was there for quite a time. Um, that contractor period was like fly in fly out so six on six off sometimes it's a bit longer sometimes it's a bit less but generally we were there after seeing the savagery of those people I don't want them in our country if I can share with you one instance and, and it, it is gruesome but the Taliban devised a, a new type of weapon, which was a water bottle. Simple water bottle like that. They turned it into an explosive device that was big enough to be anti-personnel. So not to kill, but to wound. Now, the reason for that is, in the military, if someone's wounded, they're so more of a yeah. liability yeah. to the rest of their troops. Because mm -hmm. then you've got a medic who's taken out of yeah, the fight. as fast as your slowest man. That's it, right? Uh, and they will converge on that person to help them. That's the way it goes. 
Um, so the water bottle was thrown on the ground. Now these two guys were from the same village as these two children, a boy and a girl. They said to the young girl, stand on that, and she refused. So big tough Taliban grabs the boy, puts an AK-47 to his head, and says stand on it or we shoot him. So, and then the second guy stood behind the first guy, knowing that the blast radius of the item isn't going to hurt them, they may get a little bit of rocks and whatever come at them. So the little girl, not wanting her brother to be killed, stood on the device. It totally destroyed her left foot, put shrapnel wounds all up her inner legs and crutch, and mangled her right foot. Uh, I wasn't personally on the aircraft that recovered her, but I was at the hospital in the chase aircraft, uh, which draws fire out while the medics are doing their thing. So, so that the medivac aircraft can get in there unhindered, we stay at height, so any of the bad guys shoot at us, not at them. Yeah. All right, so we're like... The decoy. The decoy. Yeah. They got in there, got the young girl, got her there, and then after everything was washed up, the interpreter told us the story. And that sickened me to my stomach. And then, coming home, while I was over there, my mates were committing suicide in Australia who had been there before me. I get home and it's still occurring. And one of the main reasons for that is they don't understand why our government is importing mm. our enemy. Mm, exactly. 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 While well, they're over there fighting. So they're going over there and look, I'll be blunt. Soldiers are trained to kill. That's what we're, they're there to do. That's it. We go and do the job. We get the job done. It's finished. We come home. But and then, uh, now we're coming yeah. home and we're face to face with the people we just left. Yeah. 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 And there's no such thing as a good Muslim. Well, you look at the United Nations, the member who is there for human rights comes from Saudi Arabia. Now the last video have to be to even walk down the street. The last video I saw of Saudi Arabia, as per usual, the woman being subservient to the male because they're treated like dogs worse than dogs. It's in the Korean, don't forget. She's walking about 20 metres behind him across an intersection. As he's walking across the intersection and he's nearing the footpath, he started in uh, Pashtu calling her an adulterer. Within two minutes, a crowd had formed. The police officers who were directing traffic at that intersection had controlled the crowd to have her in the middle whilst a masked man walked out of the crowd with a knife and cut her head off. Now, no evidence except for her husband saying yeah. she's an adulterer. That we do not <coughs> want, we do not need in this country. And to think that myself and a lot of others have been over there trying to sort the place out for them so they can live in harmony, to then come home to them starting to build their Sharia areas in Australia, mm -hmm. sickens me to the court. Yeah. Um, I agree. Yeah. I won't harp on about that. That's my yeah. personal view. Yep. But uh, um, you know, uh, you understand why you are saving on my next passer. Oh yeah. Uh, A one seven squadron. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah. I was an aircraft lucky. Yeah. So he's a birdie. Yeah, birdie. Back in the nineties. Okay. So birdie's an. Uh, so he's a passer. He's in the navy. A one seven squadron is uh, an aircraft squadron that deployed the boats. Good on you. So yeah. he. Uh, <laughs> That our biggest threat is Islam from uh, Indonesia. Yes. Yeah. So yes. now it's come to the point where uh, our government's are opening up the door, mm -hmm. and our threat is not a few hundred k's away. It's, it's right. on our doorstep. It's inside. Yeah. 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 So, right. Well, the, the, exactly. the, <laughs> to arm himself. <laughs> one thing that one thing, another thing that's sickening me to my core was uh, within or less than 24 hours after that tsunami that hit um, Indonesia. Julia Gillard had committed $340 million for them to buy helicopters. For them. Yeah. Now, an Apache helicopter cost $80 million. They bought six of them. So their country had to contribute $40 million so they could have half a squadron of attack helicopters that we don't have. And those helicopters are the best 
attack helicopters in the world, they will annihilate basically anything within their range. And we may end up seeing them here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Something, They're on our doorstep. Something within the military you have is called weapons overmatch. Okay, so if I'm fighting Fraser, he's got a 22, I want a 2 to 3. So Fraser goes, hey, he's got a 2 to 3, I'm going to get a 308. So he gets a 308. And then I go, ah, no way, I'm going to get a 50 cal. Alright, that's how it works. You've got to have weapons overmatch. So whatever your enemy's got, you have to have better and more capable equipment. Now that donation or whatever the hell Gillard puts it down as protection money, exactly, um, money. exactly what it is. Just weakened our defence to the point those six aircraft can come across and do a hell of a lot of damage, and we have no defence against it. Hopefully not on our watch. So um, no. it will make it work. Not happen. thanks very much to yeah. Michael for yeah. running for his service and and also for the information he's seen it firsthand. As has this gentleman. So, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think you'll be a great candidate. <laughs> I hope so. Thanks. I just, you uh, will be. I just have to make sure that my filters turned on every now and then. Just now and then. No, really, um, uh, good man. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you very much to say exactly what you want in Australia and uh, when somebody says you shouldn't be saying this or shouldn't be saying that, just take no notice, you say it exactly the way you want it to, that's what the good diggers died in the trenches for, so uh, I'm happy to say what I, what I believe. I'm sure if you ask a question, if you ask a question, that, that can't be misconstrued as other than asking a question. Well you'd think so, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. You would I agree. So, so Grant, that's uh, Final solution. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't want to. We're all here to see Fraser, not me. Um, I'm just. I've never been interested. Well, had no desire to be in politics until the last few years. Well, I'm semi-retired and started looking how bad things are happening. And then this man come along and just won't back down. He's he's just he's a legend. <laughs> and it's exactly what we need. Yeah. So I'll let Fraser do the talk. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, they're, they're, I mean, they're, they're great guys. They're standing up for your country, for our country, uh, and our way of life. And um, uh, you know, you've heard what uh, Islam can do. And uh, uh, there's always the, the, the pretty faces with the you know the hijabs on, and they're smiling. And that's not exactly how it ends up. You know, when when you get a a, a lot of them into your country, as we've seen. Um, so uh, as they build up, and they they outbreed us a long way. You know, most Australians are lucky to be able to afford two kids, let alone 16, and you know that they have. And uh, well, that's because they've got three wives. And well, that's right. Well, how, how many Muslims have we actually got in our parliament? Seven now, I think. Seven or nine. Seven Muslims in so our there's, parliament. So there's seven in parliament, and, and they shouldn't be there. They swear their uh, allegiance. What to about Penny Wong? Is she going to like come up with her citizenship to, sometime? To a, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, they swear allegiance on the Quran, and uh, uh, Islam is actually an ideology of hate. And it's also a form of government. So when you swear allegiance on that Quran, you're actually swearing allegiance to a foreign uh, yeah. government. So it be and that, 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 that's going to be challenged in the High Court sooner or later. Uh, hopefully by us. It has to be challenged. They can't swear allegiance to a Quran. They've got to swear allegiance to a Quran. We were built Judaism. Well, that's right, to Australia. Exactly. And isn't it marvellous? You know, if, you happen to, if your grandma happened to be uh, English or uh, Irish, you're not welcome in Parliament, but if you're swearing on a Quran, yeah. you are. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. you know, who yeah. knows? Who knows how that got through? But th that's all the political correctness that we have in our in our system now, and we've got to start getting it back to uh, sanity.